My name is Dr. Peter Hotez. I'm an MD, PhD, uh, pediatrician scientist, laboratory investigator. I'm a professor at Baylor College of Medicine, and I've devoted my entire life over the last 40 years focused on vaccines for global health, vaccines for uh, poverty-related neglected diseases. And for the last 10 years, we've added to that a program for coronavirus vaccines. Interestingly, and we're not seeing that much involvement from the big pharmaceutical companies. And I think that's very telling because there probably is not going to be a big financial return on COVID-19 vaccines. So there's this narrative out there, you know, among the conspiracy theories that the, the importance of COVID-19 is being exaggerated because pharma sees big profits coming into this space. And that's probably not the case. And especially for vaccines. Dr. Fauci says a year to 18 months. I think that may even be a little optimistic. We may be talking about two years away. So there's a good, there's a good chance that this vaccine that's developed would be wound up being stockpiled. Just like we were gonna do with the original SARS vaccine and the MERS coronavirus vaccine. And you know, the big pharma companies not, likely don't wanna make a vaccine that's not gonna be used, the vaccine for stockpiling. I've even had one large pharmaceutical company manufactured, I won't say who, tell me that, uh, Peter, we're, we're gonna wait and see, we're holding back and see if this disease comes back year after year after year, and then maybe we'll move into this space, but, but we're not gonna do it. So if, the, if they're out, and, and we'll see if they come in later on, but if they're out, it, it doesn't leave a really robust system of organizations in place to make vaccines. So what you're seeing now, is uh, a few biotechs that are mo that are doing this, and uh, organizations like ours, which is based at the university, linking with other organizations like ours, and and we're called together product development partnerships. But they're essentially nonprofits with a humanitarian goal that use industry practices to make stuff. So that's the space, and that's complexity number one, complexity number two, is trying to develop these vaccines uh, in the middle of a pandemic. They say, well, gee, can't you compress the timelines on this? And can we do this and that? And you can. Uh, the only problem is because of this issue with immune enhancement that's seen in experimental coronavirus vaccines, where depending on the formulation and how you deliver it and the technology used to deliver it, you can actually make things worse instead of making things better. And uh, that will slow things down. So this was a phenomenon that was initially described in the 1960s where they developed an a formalin uh, and activated RSV vaccine. RSV is called respiratory syncytial virus. It's a uh, virus of neonates causes severe uh, infant dis uh, respiratory disease. The vaccine actually made kids worse. And, some, and we think there were two deaths uh, from those studies. In laboratory animals, we saw this uh, similar phenomena with coronavirus vaccines. So I think in theory, there's more things you can do to compress the timelines. I'm not sure this is the vaccine you want to do that with.